When you're diving into Bitcoin's history, the term cyberpunks pops up frequently. What was their role in the origins of Bitcoin, going back decades ago? Hello, Adrian here for Bitcoin for Beginners. In this series, Bitcoin Elementary, we will explore a wide range of aspects specifically related to Bitcoin. To start off the first episode of Season 1, we will look into the origins of Bitcoin that seems to have been much influenced by the cyberpunk movement and led to the eventual creation of Bitcoin and blockchain technology. You may be surprised to learn that the whole evolution already started back in the 80s. Some prominent people from the cyberpunks have been and some still are influential in the development of Bitcoin. So to better understand the origins of Bitcoin, we will take a brief look into the history of the cyberpunk movement. This video is part of a content partnership with Real eChain, a platform for blockchain education. If after this video you would like to see more of their free content, you can go and visit their website at realechain.com. Until the 1970s, the science of cryptography was carefully kept secret by the government and only used by the military and intelligence agencies. After publication of two different cryptographic systems, including a work on public key cryptography, the general public became aware of the concept of cryptography. One of the first technical works that can be tied to the emergence of cyberpunks was that of David Chaum, who in 1985 published a paper that already mentions the concept of anonymous digital cash. In the late 1980s, the evolution continued with the emergence of the cyberpunks in the form of a movement. Cyberpunks were part of a new generation who valued individual liberty through protection of freedom of speech and privacy at the upcoming digital age. Cyberpunks were critical towards a world not governed by logical reason, but by greed, corporatism, subversion, bureaucracy, inefficiency and censorship. In a broad definition, as featured on Wikipedia, a cyberpunk is an activist who advocates the widespread use of strong cryptography and privacy-enhancing technologies as a route to social and political change. Cyberpunks from the very early days viewed a digital cash system as a vital part of their objectives. Before we continue, if you like the content of this series, you can like this video and additionally subscribe to our channel to be updated when we release the other episodes of this season or of our other series. In 1992, the cyberpunk mailing list started. Participants of this mailing list were also called cyberpunks. Cyberpunks can therefore refer to any activist that advocates cyberpunk values, participants of the cyberpunk mailing list, many of them overlap both, but not necessarily. Since the mailing list started, also independent informal groups emerged that were aimed to achieve privacy and security through proactive teaching, developing and use of cryptography. By 2007, the number of subscribers to the mailing list appears to have been around 2000. A cyberpunks manifesto was published in 1993 by Eric Hughes. What are some key points and those that are relevant to Bitcoin? The first sentence is, privacy is necessary for an open society in the electronic age. It also says that it requires an anonymous transaction system, because physical cash has always fulfilled that role so far, but physical cash can be used in digital systems. That privacy also requires cryptography, and that they don't expect governments and large corporations and organizations to grant privacy to people, much rather the opposite. Therefore, cyberpunks commit to building systems of cryptography for privacy and online transactions. Also, that they are against regulations that restrict cryptography, and that they view privacy and cryptography as part of the common good. Who are some of the notable cyberpunks? Jacob Applebaum, the Tor developer, Julian Assange of WikiLeaks, John Gilmore, co-founder of cyberpunks, Eric Hughes, author of a cyberpunks manifesto, Philip Zimmerman, creator of PGP, which stands for Pretty Good Privacy, and cyberpunks strongly related to Bitcoin specifically, such as Adam Beck, inventor of Hashcash and co-founder of Blockstream, the late Hal Finney, a cryptographer who was involved in the early Bitcoin development, and Nick Jabot, inventor of smart contracts and the designer of BitGold. Prior to Bitcoin, there were several digital cash attempts already. Let's look at some. First, eCash by David Chaum's company DigitCash which was inspired by his idea dating back from 1985. It was already anonymous cryptographic electronic money. However, it was centralized around his company DigiCash and it lacked a consensus mechanism. It couldn't get enough traction and wasn't able to get off the ground due to the fact that it was operated by a centralized company, but it did spark a lot of interest in the cyberpunk movement. And then there was BitGold by Nick Zabo in 1998, a decentralized network protocol that had many similarities to Bitcoin. It was, however, never implemented, because it could not solve the notorious double spending problem. Another digital cash attempt was eGold by the company Gold and Silver Reserve Incorporated. 
It launched in 1996. It was a non-cryptocurrency and not decentralized. It was more sort of a PayPal, but then backed by gold reserves. It was however quite successful. In 2006 it processed even 2 billion dollars per year, while they only had 71 million gold in reserve. But they got into a bunch of legal trouble by regulators crackdown and seizures since 2007. One of the founders even risked severe prison time. The whole project was terminated in 2009. However, there were also important lessons learned for cyberpunks. Centralized authority for digital currency is a critical choke point and puts publicly known founders in serious legal risk with government. Where did this doubt by cyberpunks in the current flawed systems come from? Think about the more recent disaster of the financial crisis of 2007 that also played a key role in this whole history. It began with the crisis in a subprime mortgage market in the US and became a full-blown international banking crisis with the collapse of investment bank Lehman Brothers on September 15, 2008. Why did it happen? Because of the greed and profitability of banks. It led to massive bailouts of financial institutions to prevent a possible collapse of the world financial system. Banks and government were responsible for the crisis, but the taxpayers' money was used to bail out these banks. To prevent the creation of centralized systems that could be easily corrupted, cyberpunks valued decentralization as a means of removing humans from positions of authority. Through decentralization, they could create inherent trust within systems determined programmatically by computers. In the aftermath of the financial crisis in 2008, Satoshi Nakamoto, still an unknown person or group, published the Bitcoin white paper. One of his revolutionary discoveries was his solution for the double spend problem that had remained to be solved by computer scientists and cypherpunks in order to finally create a viable digital cash system. Satoshi's proof of work consensus mechanism was the missing link that made it reality. The fact that the system and consensus mechanism are decentralized with no central authority in the form of a company or any person, after all Satoshi remained anonymous and disappeared, makes it that Bitcoin checks almost any requirement that the cyberpunk movement identified. Challenge that remains from the cyberpunk's vision is the aspect of anonymity of the digital cash system. Bitcoin is only pseudonymous so far, but there is a lot of work being done to ultimately improve Bitcoin's privacy and fungibility by cryptographic innovation. It seems clear though that the person or the group of people that identified as Satoshi were either part of the cyberpunk movement or at the very least greatly influenced and inspired by them. The proof that the financial crisis of 2008 also inspired Satoshi to create Bitcoin was the fact that this newspaper article headline was included as message in Bitcoin's very first mind block. If you enjoyed this video, don't forget to give a like. If you want to see more episodes of this series, Bitcoin Elementary, please subscribe to our channel to follow all the new episodes. Looking forward to see you all back again for the next one. Take care and remember, not your keys, not your coins.